What is up, everyone? Welcome back to the Hoodats Pod. I'm Caden Janish here, and it is draft week. I know it's been a minute since I last recorded and posted something just me talking, not having like a player interview or a YouTube show or whatever. Gonna try and be better about it. Just, you know, been a little busy. Things happen and all that. But uh, we got an episode today talking about the draft, and we're kind of just gonna be going over, you know, Saints' biggest needs, what I think the Saints are gonna do, whether they trade up. Uh, anything like that, biggest needs, my favorite players at each position, realistically, for the Saints. So, yeah, let's dive into uh, the topic, the hottest topic of the offseason, basically, in the NFL draft. Um, as I'm recording this, this is Monday, the Saints pick Thursday, uh, pick 29. They have eight picks going into the draft, one on day one, round one pick 29 which they acquired in the sean payton trade to denver and they have a pick two picks on day two pick number 40 in round two pick 71 in round three and then on day three they have five picks round four round five round five round seven round seven if you guys want to know the exact picks you can look them up but chances are a lot of those picks aren't going to stay exactly where they're at because i think the saints are going to trade up um in the first round, I think they're going to trade up to the late teens, like 17 to 19 to like the early 20s, like 20 to 23. I think there's going to, especially in this draft, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of players in this draft who a lot of teams like or a lot of people in general just like later in the draft as like a steal. seems like outside of the top 15, it's just kind of like you're going to be taking a player who's maybe going to help you in the future or won't be an instant person who contributes on the team and i know it's like that for a lot of drafts but this one seems a little bit different um in previous drafts you know i thought the saints might be able to get someone decent i like pick 25 or whatever they were picking back when they had drew Brees on the team and they're like one or two players away from a super bowl um yeah i feel like the Saints are going to trade up i think if the right player who they like with the right grade falls to the right spot say for example if miles murphy someone they have a grade like pick 10 grade on falls to pick 18 i think they can package 29 and pick 71 or next year second which they acquired in the sean payton trade as well and trade up um i am against the saints using a future first round pick for a trade unless they unless cj stroud falls like pick number 10 and they have to have them kind of thing for you know down the line because while they do have Derek Carr, I think Derek Carr is someone who's going to help them stay competitive for now, for the next year or two. But they are they have to also keep looking for their next franchise quarterback, for the guy who is going to keep them competitive and take them to that next level for the next 10 to 15 years. And if C.J. Stroud, say, falls to 10 and the Saints really love him, I would be okay with them trading next round, next year's first round pick, this year's first, and getting C.J. Stroud, or if they think Anthony Richardson is that guy, which, I mean, I I wouldn't do it, but, I mean, there's a reason why I'm not an NFL scout or a GM, and there's a reason why most of you, I'm assuming all of you who are listening to this, aren't GMs or scouts or whatever, so if the Saints feel like they should trade up and get a quarterback and whatever, then that's what they're going to do. So the Saints have eight picks, and what should they do with those eight picks? What are the biggest needs, wants, whatever on the team? And obviously the biggest need, it's been the biggest talking point of the offseason ever since free agency started, is defensive line. The Saints need to improve their defensive line or else it's going to be terrible. The Saints, I don't even know how they had a top 10 defense last season. They had no pass rush. They had no run defense. They had barely any turnovers, and yet they are top 10 defense in almost every category, which was ridiculous. I think what Dennis Allen is doing, you know, kind of revamping the defensive coaching staff, wanting to do things his way, get his own guys in the building, and kind of, you know, retool the defensive line, I think is smart, but they have to retool with the right players. So that means you can't be going into game one with Carl Granderson on one side, Cam Jordan on the other, Nathan Shepard, and Colin Saunders in the interior. And I like Saunders, Shepard, and Granderson, but those guys aren't going to win a lot of reps in the passing game. Those those guys are going to help a lot in the rushing game. I think of those three guys, Carl Granderson is the person I have the most confidence in in winning a pass rushing one-on-one. But even that, he's... 
he he's never been a full time starter. He's been a rotational guy, and I just don't have that much faith in them. So the biggest need for me, biggest need, biggest must, biggest want is defensive line. That's both defensive tackle and defensive end. Next biggest need or must on the team is running back because you have Jamal Williams, you have Alvin Kamara, and that's about it. Alvin Kamara is going to be facing a suspension at most six games. We don't know. We're going to find out whether or not he gets suspended, I believe, come end of July, start of August. And that's when his court stuff's supposed to finish up, I believe, and then shortly after that. NFL will probably release something saying uh, his suspension, depending on the situation, because the NFL typically waits till all the legal process stuff goes away for for them to give a punishment to a player. So that and the Saints just have to get younger at the running back position. Alvin Kamara, they've been using him like an actual running back, like Mark Ingram kind of running back the past two seasons. And you can definitely tell his body's taken a toll on from, from all those hits. And, I mean, he's not getting any younger. I love Alvin Kamara. But, you know, he you can definitely tell there's been a dip in his play over the past few seasons. Then you could argue the whole uh, the scheme isn't using him right or whatever. But if you're a great player, whether or not the scheme gets you involved or not, you have to be great and you have to separate yourself from the others. In this past season, in the past two seasons in general, it just doesn't seem like Alvin Kamara really separated himself too much from the other guys. And I think that's also the Drew Brees effect. Drew Brees got Alvin Kamara involved a lot. He called the audibles, got him involved in the passing game, quick passes, check downs, and got Alvin Kamara in space. We haven't seen the Saints really get Alvin Kamara in space at all, really, the past two seasons. And, you know, that's not just Dennis Allen P. Carmichael. That's Sean Payton included for the 2021 season. So I think the Saints need to get younger at the running back position. I Jamal Williams is kind of like he's both a receiving back and a power back. He didn't do too much as a receiver last year for Detroit, but he's made some pretty good plays as a receiver in the past. He caught a really magnificent touchdown against the Chiefs the past two, three seasons ago when he was in Green Bay. Um, but I think the Saints, I honestly wouldn't care whether they dri- – took like a bruiser back or like a receiving back i mean if gibbs is there i take him i wouldn't be mad at it if they traded up for robinson get a bruiser back i wouldn't be mad at it i just think they need to get younger at that position but i wouldn't i would hope they wouldn't take a running back in round one unless they think this guy is like the forthcoming of derrick henry or bo jackson or walter payton barry sanders whatever um so yeah, running back and defensive line, those are my two like biggest um they they have to draft players at those positions. I think if they don't then before the season even starts, before seeing a snap, you'd have to say, What the heck was this draft? Why didn't they draft a defensive lineman or running back? So I think they have to get a player at those positions. The next thing, and this is more so for the future, I'd say offensive line. Uh, Andres Pete and Cesar Ruiz are both free agents next season. I doubt the Saints pick up Ruiz's fifth year option. He just had a really great season. He, you could argue that he was one of the best offensive linemen on the team. I'd say maybe Eric McCoy was better. Um, but there's no way you can pay him. I think the contract is like 10 or 14 million or something like that. You can't pay him that. But I do think if he ha- does have another solid season, the Saints will pay him. Well, Andres Pete, they restructured his contract, they redid it. And. What that means is he's a free agent next season. I'd like to see the Saints maybe draft a guard. I wouldn't, It's not flashy. It's not exciting. But if they drafted a guard to replace one of those guys next season, like I wouldn't be mad at it. That's thinking ahead because, well, that's just smart. Mickey Loomis knows that the Saints right now, they don't have Drew Brees. They're not one player away from the Super Bowl. They have to draft for the now and kind of draft for the future. You can't. Keep on thinking you're out, you're in win now mode all the time because you're not. You don't have Drew Brees anymore, so I wouldn't be mad at them drafting guard. I think that's not a must. I think that's more of like a a need or a want. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I think the Saints will probably take a lineman, offensive lineman, in this draft, and after that, I think a playmaker at tight end or a wide receiver. I'm gonna be a little biased here. I would like to see the Saints take Cedric Tillman. We're going to get into that a little bit more, but he's my favorite 
wide receiver in the draft and he reminds me a lot of Michael Thomas and we'll get into that a little bit later and after that I mean the Saints future at every other position is kind of thin and even the depth chart now is thin I mean outside of the starting 22 at safety if Marcus Mayer Tyron goes down you have I think Lonnie Johnson and Jonathan Abram backing them up uh no shots at those guys I think those guys are pretty talented but I think I want to be upset they drafted a safety if they drafted a corner a slot guy i mean they kind of need a slot guy bradley roby he's good he's a vet he'll get the job done but he's not going to be like on a scale of one to ten i'd say i'd give him a seven he'll have good plays he'll have bad plays i don't think adebo will be in the slot maybe they put taylor in the slot so we're gonna have to kind of see what happens there i wouldn't be mad if they drafted a corner linebacker if demario decided to retire tomorrow pete warner's had injury history Who's your backup linebackers? Now, I will say I really like DeMarco Jackson, he, but he did spend all of last season on IR, so we really don't know how good he actually is or if he will even make the team. But I do I do like DeMarco Jackson, Zach Bonds in the final year of his contract. contract. So I think linebacker is something they should address maybe in like round four or five or something like that. And then we kind of went over the offense a little bit already, so there's that. And even if the Saints don't draft a certain position, I guarantee you they're going to address it in free agency or the their undrafted free agent class. And the Saints always typically find really good undrafted free agents, at least like one or two a season. And those guys ty- typically make the practice squad and then later show out or make the squad or whatever. So um, if the Saints don't take a defensive end, they might have something in store for free agency. They might go after Frank Clark or something. I'm not trying to get your hopes up. I'm just saying, like, last season they didn't draft a safety, and then they went after Tyron Matthew. So maybe there's a situation going on. Maybe the Saints, they don't draft at this position, and then they address it in free agency a few days later kind of thing. So there's always that. Um, I mean, I would not be mad at any position they drafted outside of center and tackle. Tackle on the offensive line. In the first round, I, I don't care – Really, as long as it's not special team, center, or tackle, I don't care what position they draft in the first round. Maybe not quarterback, because if they draft a quarterback in the first round, it'll probably end up being Hendon Hooker, and that that's a reach. But we'll get into qu- quarterbacks a little bit later. Actually, no, we'll get into that now, because that is the next segment. So now we're going to be talking about my favorite realistic prospects for the Saints at each position. So I guess we'll start off with quarterback. My two favorite quarterbacks in this draft who are realistic for the Saints, Hendon Hooker and Dorian Thompson Robinson. I think getting one of those two guys, if it's possible, I'm not saying they have to. I'm just saying, you know, these are my favorite guys of those positions. Those guys are athletic. They can run. They can throw. And, you know, if they sat behind Derek Carr, Taysom Hill, Jameis Winston, you know, learn a little bit from each guy, pick their brains, like that would really help develop them and say, Five, three years down the road, the Saints need to start one of those guys. I'd be pretty confident because they just sat behind Derek Carr, Taysom Hill, James Winston. They could learn about Derek Carr and the way he operates the playbook. They could learn about from James and how, you know, how to utilize their arm strength and all that. And they can learn how to utilize their athleticism from Taysom Hill. There's they could literally pick their each quarterback's brain because they're all three different style of offensive players. And I, I think that'd be really great for Dorian Thompson Robinson or Hendon Hooker. I think those guys could really benefit from learning from those three guys. So those are my two favorite realistic, realistic prospects for the Saints at quarterback. Now at running back, I don't know how realistic Jameer Gibbs is, but I like him. Uh, a lot of people think he's going to go in the first round. I don't think he will. I think he'll go early second or maybe like the last few picks in the first round. But... I think Tajay Spears is someone who the Saints can probably get in round three, round four. Um, I prefer them to get them in round three because I think he's going to be gone by round four. And he's someone who's speedy. He could run routes. He He's just... And he's from Tulane, which is in Louisiana. Like every, It just fits too perfectly. I think Spears will be a Saint. I think he met with the Saints. I believe he's a Saints fan or grew up a Saints fan. And I know the Saints like him a lot. Uh, so I think Spears is my number one like running back realistic guy, you know, in the later in the later rounds outside of round one. Now, 
But wide receiver, I like Cedric Tillman the most. And be, one, because it's realistic for the Saints to get him in the second round, maybe trade up for him or whatever. And two, the way he, the way he's built, he's built like Michael Thomas. He's big, he's physical. And the Saints need another one of those guys. Michael Thomas's health, unfortunately, you can't rely on it anymore. You know how many games he's going to play. His injury luck has been so unfortunate. And if he goes down, your next physical wide receiver is Brian Edwards. And thinking, looking forward to the future, St. Michael Thomas does play the whole season, but you don't want to bring him back just because age, money, and all that. You could draft Cedric Tillman, have him learn from Michael Thomas, have him pick his brain, pick Michael Thomas's brain, because he's talent-wise, he's one of the best receivers in the league, top five receiver in the league. He was a Hall of Fame talent before he dealt with all these injuries. So Cedric Tillman also, looking at his page, listening to some of his interviews, he reminds me of Michael Thomas's personality. He always, he has talked about like Michael Jordan. He does like a Michael Jordan celebration and always talking about like improving. And they just, he just reminds me too much of Michael Thomas for me to not be so very excited about him and for me to not think that he might be the best receiver in this draft class. At least for now, you know, I, I guarantee you or at some point I might regret saying that, but Cedric Tillman is my favorite receiver in the draft. A tight end, Michael Mayer. I wouldn't be upset if the Saints drafted any tight end because the Saints need a better tight end too. Adam Troutman, man, he, I don't know what to say. The Saints just need a better tight end too. They've always used two tight ends. It was always Benjamin Watson or Jimmy Graham and Josh Hill or Juwan Johnson and Josh Hill, I think, for a season. And then now it's Adam Troutman. And they, they need another tight end to help Juwan. Juwan's good. They need another tight end who can run, block, and make contested catches. I think Michael Mayer could be that guy. If they took him in the first round or trade up to get him, I wouldn't be upset at it. So there's, that's my favorite tight end in the draft. And the offensive line at guard is Osiris Torrance. And I don't know really what to say. He's a good guard, good player. Wouldn't be upset if the Saints drafted him in the first round. And he's realistic. It's realistic that he falls to the end of the first round. On the defensive side, defensive tackle, Kalaje Kansi, I think every Saints fan, at least from like Twitter, Instagram, and all that, they want him. They like him. They think he's the next Aaron Donald. Only, con only concern is his size. He's, I think, 6'1 and has really small arms. I think the smallest arms and, I don't know, like 20 years or something like that. I, I don't know. So there is concern with his size, but he is very athletic. And if he adds on like 10 to 15 pounds, his size... It's still a concern because his arm and height. But if he adds 10 to 15 pounds and he can still stay athletic as he is right now, then it is no longer a concern. He, he'd he be a freak. And as long as he could get like six, seven sacks a season, as a rookie at least, like that would give me hope. That'd get me excited. A defensive end. Miles Murphy is someone I think the Saints, if he falls to like 18 or something, the Saints will trade up. I think he's one of those players who, if he falls to the right spot at the right time, the Saints will trade up without a second thought and take him. The other guy, Isaiah Frosky, he reminds he and Marcus Davenport are very similar in their like athletic scores, their size, their combine, and all this and all that. I don't know too much about him, but looking at like his profile, a little bit of his highlights and film and stuff like that, I wouldn't mind taking him, but I wouldn't trade up to get him. So. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I have on Isaiah Frosky's and Miles Murphy, who are my favorite, like, defensive end players. At linebacker, I like Jeremy Banks in the later rounds from Tennessee. Um, he's someone who, I mean, the Saints, I think Tennessee might be the new Ohio State for the Saints. They've been getting a lot of luck at, from Tennessee with Alante Taylor, Marquez Callaway for was pretty decent Malcolm Roach and there's an oh Alvin Kamara so Tennessee's starting to become the new Ohio State and he's an athletic guy he's very fast he can run and chase run running backs he takes good angles he oh what's the word he takes good pursuit angles and he recognizes the plays very fast and very good and I really like that about him but his size and the upside for him just isn't there but, I mean, if you're taking him in, like, round five or whatever, I mean, you're not looking for upside. You're just looking for talent. Um, so, yeah. At corner, and the only reason I have this guy at corner is because he plays the slot. Jordan Howden, I went minor with the Saints, took him. 
he he's someone who I think he's faster than what his forty time says. He has good instincts. He's physical, and he that's what you kind of need in a slot. You need someone who's pretty fast, can be physical. Chauncey he wasn't the fastest guy, but he was decently fast. He was physical, made plays in the backfield, got sacks. He's physical in the slot and press and stuff. I won't mind that, but I mean he still with the weakness with Howden though, he's still not the fastest guy. And he has some issues with his eyes looking back in coverage and double moves and stuff. But, I mean, no one's going to be perfect. And especially since he's going to probably be a day three pick. But he's someone who I think the Saints should take for, like, the slot. And finally, safety. I like Brian Branch. But I don't know how realistic it is this for the Saints to take him. Or for him to even fall to the Saints. But, I mean, if the Saints took him, I'd be ecstatic. Learning behind Tyrone Matthew, learning behind Marcus Marcus May, take both, pick their brains, and stuff like that, and be pretty excellent. And the other guy, Rashad Torrance, is the other safety who could be a day three pick at safety. I think his personality will fit with the Saints, you know, but he's a day three pick. There's going to be a lot of improvement needed, tackling, coverage, eyes, and all that. But yeah, so those are my favorite players at each position going into the draft who are realistic, I think, for the Saints to get. So, one last final thing. How many of the eight picks do the Saints need to hit on for this to be a successful draft? I don't think they have to hit on every draft. I don't think this needs to be a 2017 draft, and I really doubt they keep all eight of those picks. But, I think, say, out of the eight, I think they need to hit on four. And they don't need to be Hall of Famers. They don't need to be all pros. They just need to be good contributor, contributing players. If you look at the 2021 NFL draft for the Saints, who'd they get? Uh, outside of Peyton Turner, they got Pete Warner and Paulson Adebo. If they got those two guys, if they got four players who played like Pete Warner and Paulson Adebo, I won't be mad at it. 2019 draft, they got Eric McCoy, Chauncey, and um, they got someone else. I can't remember, but they were all good. You know, maybe not Hall of Fame good, but they contribute. They're really good players. So I think of the eight, I think they need to hit on three to four for it to be a good draft. And that's all I have for this episode. Stay tuned, though. Tomorrow we're going to do a mock draft. And then after that, it will be draft day. And we'll talk about the draft after the Saints make their picks. So see you guys next time. Make sure you subscribe, hit a like, and comment down below your draft project. Yeah your draft projections for the Saints.